What ended up being this country's defining hockey moment hardly started out that way. At the time, you know, it was supposed to be exhibition, but it turned out uh, all with such seriousness. The feelings of goodwill and sportsmanship quickly vanished. After the first game, maybe after the first period, we had no idea. Because of my age and so on, um, I mean, I never had the opportunity to represent this country in the great wars, but Espel Esposito said this was war. Playing the first four games on home ice, Team Canada was outclassed by the Soviets, winning only once. I think the first game just shocked everybody. We were not prepared, we took it too lightly, and um, it, it showed, uh, you know, the Russians just walked right over us. After the game four loss in Vancouver, the Canadian team was booed off the ice. Four or five young guys that were standing by the Zamboni entrance in Vancouver yelling that communism is better and all this other stuff. And I almost threw my stick at him like a spear. Esposito's frustrations on full display on national TV. For the people that boo us, geez, I, I'm really, I, all of us guys are really disheartened and we're disillusioned and we're disappointed in some of the people. We cannot believe the bad press we've got, uh, the, the booing we've gotten in our own buildings. I had no idea what I said. Ten years later, I looked at it, and the first, my first reaction was, ooh, I'm embarrassed. I almost swore twice during it, and there's no doubt about that. It was a speech that swayed a nation. <laughs> Heading to Moscow, the Canadian players were not alone. There were 3,500 fans over there, and um, it opened the eyes of, of most Russians. Despite the large cheering section, Canada blew a 3-0 lead in Game 5, eventually losing 5-4. The team now faced with the daunting task of winning the final three games. Rob Leth, Global News.